Hey, Eat, Move, Rest fam. We are super excited today to bring you an epic conversation yes. we just had with Dr. Michael Greger himself. Yep. We've had him on the channel before, but if anybody is unfamiliar... He's the best. He has <laughs> nutritionfacts.org. Aaron was saying in our conversation that when people ask us questions that we don't know or they want more information, we send them to Dr. Greger at nutritionfacts.org. Besides that, he's written so many books and he's got another new, really exciting one coming out. So we thought we would hop on a call with him and get the scoop. So how not to age, we are so excited. You may have heard of how not to die, how yep. not to diet. Right. He's got tons of best-selling books, but this one is definitely a must read. It is the anti-aging wow. or aging gracefully Bible. It is massive. <laughs> it comes out December 5th. We're super excited for Dr. Greger to weigh in on all things anti-aging, aging gracefully, and longevity, intermittent fasting, to consuming collagen, good or bad, sun exposure, good or bad, right. topical skin cares, what else? Is cholesterol necessary for testosterone and healthy hormones? We talk about the blue zones and their secrets to longevity. And some of the best plant-powered foods for longevity and anti-aging right. as well. Right. One of our biggest questions was smoothies, good or bad, because I know <laughs> that there's debate. You guys are going to want to sit down, prop your phones up, and give this one a listen from start to finish. Be sure to pre-order How Not to Age. You can get it at all of your major booksellers and on Dr. Greger's website, nutritionfacts.org. It is a must read. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps our channel out tremendously. Leave us some love in the comments and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get right into it hey hey how's it going how are you going great things let's rock and roll <laughs> <laughs> we are super excited today to have dr michael greger joining us he has been on our channel prior <laughs> we originally we go way back we yep. met you at a conference several years yeah. ago plant-based conference our lives have certainly changed a lot but we're having a lot of fun and we're still living and eating the same way we're feeling better i just turned 37 i feel better than when i was 27 i'm strong <laughs> awesome. bitter all the things thanks to guys like you that have uh paved the way and, and helped educate us on on the, how to eat how to live and in your new book is uh super exciting yes we are super excited for how not to age really excited to kind of dive into a little bit of longevity and right. you know not necessarily anti-aging but how to age as gracefully as we possibly can yeah so we can hopefully be in our 90s hiking mountains someday <laughs> <laughs> i think at the top of mind for us and probably many of our viewers is just could you touch on in your research what foods lend well to longevity? Like, are there specific plant foods? Yeah, well, based on more than a hundred surveys in the blue zones, you know, these areas around the world with the healthiest, longest living populations, the uh, you know we should center our diets around whole plant foods, so fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. Decrease our intake of meat, dairy, eggs, salt, sugar maximizing all the good stuff basically real food that grows out of the ground these are our healthiest choices but if you forced me to pick just a few <laughs> um it would be uh, part of my anti-aging eight um would be nuts every day the healthiest snack greens every day the healthiest vegetable and berries every day the healthiest fruit nice awesome love it those are some of our favorites so that's good news yep <laughs> Dr. Gregor, while we have you, Aaron and I are smoothie fans. Now, we've, we've also met and, and heard Dr. Elselston talk a few times, and he's not the biggest smoothie fan. But what do you think, since you're talking about greens, berries, these things end up in our morning smoothies every day. What do you Perfect. think about that? You actually triple the bioavailability of a key vision-protecting nutrient, lutein, when you blend greens as opposed to eating them uh, whole leaf. And so you are unleashing all that nutrition. It's a fantastic way um, to get your greens, to sneak them into breakfast as well. Yeah, um, I am all in favor. Speaking of breakfast and smoothies and, and greens, what about coffee? Now, I know there's a lot of talk about coffee, good or bad. Our followers know Aaron and I have never been coffee drinkers. But we get a lot of people that are upset about that. Um, what are your thoughts? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, my, uh, you know, chapters on liver disease, depression, and Alzheimer's, uh, excuse me, Parkinson's and how not to die. I talk about the benefits of coffee for the liver, mind, and brain. Coffee drinkers do uh, tend to live longer, have lower cancer rates overall, but uh, coffee at the same time can worsen acid reflux, bone loss, and glaucoma. Otherwise, yep. though, coffee's good for you, though every cup of coffee is a lost opportunity to drink something even healthier, a cup of green tea. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. Good. Yeah, we love, we are tea drinkers. So there you go. Well, then you're, then you're, you're right on board. That's perfect. <laughs> so green tea. So coffee's good. People that drink coffee live longer, but green tea is even better. Right. And so there's actually, you live even longer drinking green tea. Um, yeah. than drinking coffee so yeah so i mean it's just like look bananas are healthy for you but blueberries are healthier are you saying right. bananas are bad no no one's saying bananas are bad I'm just yeah. saying if you have an op option to put something on your oatmeal blueberries just happen to be better right everything we put in our mouth has an opportunity cost it's a lost opportunity to put something even healthy in our mouths so we can always kind of ratchet things up and so if you're gonna put something hot in a mug yeah. Well, that's caffeinated, then uh, yeah, green tea would be better. Makes sense. Great. That's great news. Uh, yeah. I guess while um, I'm thinking about it, for our viewers who aren't um, sure why you're bobbing up and down, Dr. Yeah. Gregor <laughs> is notorious for always walking on his treadmill, which... right. Applause for you. Yeah. Um, I, I apologize yeah, if I'm, I'm making anybody good. nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> but on that note, since our channel is Eat, Move, Rest, we yeah. should have to also cover movement in regards to longevity. Is there like an optimal way to move or not to move? Can you overdo it? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the most important thing for most Americans would be to go from not moving to moving, right? Yes. That That's beyond kind of anything else uh, in terms of the, the critical. Um, so, you know, the the list of benefits from exercise just go on and on. It's not only improving muscle mass, and strength and balance and mobility, minimizing bone loss, minimizing uh, fall risk, but improves cognition, enhances mood, treats depression, improves artery function, sexual function, insulin sensitivity, overall quality of life. The list goes on and on. Right. Uh, even 10 minutes of moderate intensity activity, like you know, brisk walking every day, associated with living significantly longer life. Um, but uh, yes, the, the more the better, up to about 90 minutes of moderate intensity activity a day or 45 minutes of vigorous. That seems to be where you kind of plateau out the benefits. But sure. um, yeah, critically important uh, to get people moving. It's not just about not being sedentary, yeah. uh, but getting our heart rate up, getting that aerobic fitness, um, as well as doing resistance exercise for uh, muscle strength building. Awesome. Cool. I was just watching some of your videos and, and reading some articles where well, Aaron and I are wrapping up our book, which we're super excited about. It's mostly Whoa. a free book, but we're, we're, we're touching on the, the move and rest aspect too. And one of the studies, a uh, Japanese study, I think you mentioned that not walking was actually considered a high risk behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Not walking. Yeah. Walking is a great kind of entry level yeah. Um, exercise for people um has one of the lowest injury rates for thousand hours of activity um almost anybody can do it um and so yeah that's a great kind of gateway drug to get people in to start ramping up their activity totally love it one thing we we love our sun warrior protein products we we use their collagen we have so collagen, many. It's a collagen promoting, promoting products, so right? It's plant based, but there's so much hype around collagen, and we have ladies that are eat, essentially eating fish scales and weird, weird things <laughs> in an effort to boost their collagen. What's the truth about collagen? Maybe you can touch on that. Oh uh, yeah, so collagen is actually the only uh, kind of incomplete protein. Um, in the food supply, uh, missing the essential amino acid tryptophan, all plant proteins are um, complete proteins, meaning they have all essential amino acids. In the anti-aging literature, there, there's really been two spheres where it's been looked at, um, and that is in kind of the joint health space and the skin. Basically, sugar pills or placebos effectively work as good as collagen supplements. 
uh, meaning essentially collagen supplements don't work at all. Right. Um, the skin literature is a little more is a little more mixed. And I, I did a webinar about it. Um, so people can uh, check out where I go through all the evidence. Probably the best solution um, is to go, it sounds like your route, which is boosting our own ability to make collagen, which you certainly yeah. can do, by making sure we're getting sufficient vitamin C. Um, and so uh, there are experiments showing that uh, 95 uh, milligrams, which is actually above the RDA of vitamin C, is a good idea, but it's totally doable through uh, you know eating high vitamin C fruits and vegetables like citrus, tropical fruits, bell peppers, broccoli, um, as well as getting sufficient vitamin B12, which is also critical for uh, collagen stability. And that's uh, critically important, particularly for people eating plant-based diets. Speaking about skin, you probably have more questions than I do about topical treatments versus like in working things from the inside out. There's, I mean, the skincare industry is massive and I do love my skincare. I love my routine. Right. Um, but is there a lot of hype? Is a lot of it just fun? Oh my God. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, there's so much money at stake that they yeah. just can't help themselves. Right. <laughs> um, so the most important thing is protecting your skin from sun damage is the single most important way to slow aging 90%. A visible skin aging, particularly among lighter shades of skin, um, is due to sun exposure. Um, and so, you know, wearing daily, you know, SPF 15 or more sunscreen on the face, that is like the most important thing you can do. doesn't matter if it's cloudy outside. Even when you're using the safest sunscreens, which are the mineral sunscreens, the titanium, the oxide or the zinc oxide, they cover the UVA, they cover the UVB but they don't cover the infrared and the visible light, which can contribute to aging, doesn't contribute to skin cancer, but can contribute to, to sun aging. So during the kind of, you know, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, it's probably best to avoid uh, prolonged direct sunlight. So like shade, hats, that's really the way to go. But there are things you can do kind of from the inside out. The carotenoid phytonutrients actually get deposited in your skin um, and provide some baseline. Yeah. Um, uh, sun protection, like oh, oranges, which... sweet potatoes, carrots. absolutely, carrots, absolutely. Yeah. That's where you get that kind of glowing skin yeah. appearance. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. You know, when people start eating more fruits and vegetables, you can actually randomize people. There was a study where they did college students, um, and they ramped up to like nine servings of fruits and vegetables. They got significant improvement in skin appearance. Part of that is this kind of improved circulation, but also the deposition. You know, kind of yellow orange uh, uh, pigments. I've yeah. definitely noticed that. I'm a big sweet potato eater. And it yeah. kind of gives oh, that, nice. that natural like spray tan from the inside. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, it's very low level protection, but it's kind of just built in all the time. So it's a good way to kind of complement uh, more kind of heavy ways to uh, to uh, protect your skin from sun. So right. with that, um, I do know a lot of our audience is all about, you know, making sure I get enough vitamin D, for example they'll want to get it from the sun as opposed to a supplement if they can. And we're almost of that mindset too. So how do you balance that? Like yeah. getting enough, but not too much. And we so live in Florida. Yeah. And so it's like our kids are outside. I was on the kayak this morning. We get a lot of sun and, and yeah, yeah. there's a point where you get too much, but then there are people that go to the extreme of saying sunscreen is toxic. And, and other people that say, I don't ever go outside because I'm so afraid of the sun. So what yeah, do you so do? yeah so even 15 minutes on forearms and face yeah. um is sufficient for all the vitamin D you need in the day for people with sufficiently light skin who aren't obese. Um and so it really does not take much. Um and you don't have to worry about sunscreen in terms of uh of limiting your vitamin D exposure. You can still make vitamin D. The toxicity is important. So yeah. I, I I agree that people should avoid chemical sunscreens. So yeah. there are about 15 different types of sunscreens on the market in terms of active ingredients. The FDA recently came out and said only two are safe. Only two get generally recognized as safe. And we have to retest all the other ones because unbeknownst to anybody, um, the chemical sunscreens actually absorb through the skin. We didn't think so. So it's the, mm -hmm. that's why they didn't do safety testing. But it actually gets into your bloodstream at levels high enough to be concerning if indeed those chemicals are yeah. toxic and so they're back to the growing board they're doing the safety testing until we have that back 
I encourage people to stick to the mineral sunscreens, titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Get yeah, the, I mean, it's, we the get kids zinc love. stick. We just zink stick them. Like oh, perfect. Like Great. A neon pink one and a neon makes blue a fun one. For them. But it is hard to get off. So, so there's <laughs> yeah. that. But yeah, you know, we watch uh, parents at the beach with the spray cans and they they get the whole kid in the face and all the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, I don't know if I um, want to that in. So yeah, we're worried about those aerosol chemicals. Yeah. So so yeah. Hopefully those kids are not breathing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously. So okay, here's another very hot topic. Um, our audience often asks us about intermittent fasting and the benefits, and do we fast? And right. what are your thoughts on that as far as um, maybe the from topology. a longevity standpoint? Yeah. Yeah. So uh so early time restricted feeding. So um, reducing your feeding with daily feeding window to 12 hours or less, but critically moving it towards earlier rather than later. So if you're going to skip any meal, you are skipping supper, not breakfast. We should try to move more calories towards the earlier part of the day, particularly if we're right. going to eat something junky we want to have in the morning because mm -hmm. of our circadian rhythms, we're better able to deal um, with that kind of assault on our systems. Um, yeah. And so, uh, I mean, that's probably kind of the best um, uh, the best evidence, although I have old you know chapter about caloric restriction. But the benefits we see in the, the longest, largest uh, trial to date um, saw a whole array of benefits, but the caloric restriction was only 12%. So they're only cutting like a few hundred calories, like 200 calories out of their daily diet. So yeah. that's like basically like skipping a donut every day. You right. get all these benefits to caloric restriction. And I think part of that is because this was in the United States of America where normal weight is actually overweight. Right. Um, so, oh, they took overweight people, restricted their calories, and had all sorts of benefits. Is that the caloric restriction? Right. Or is it just the benefits of not being overweight? There are negative consequences to eating late, to eating yeah. after dark, um, to eating after 7 p.m., such that if you have a late um, uh, a late eating window, like people are skipping breakfast and trying to extend their um, fasting window that way, you, you can actually see deleterious metabolic benefits. Yeah. Only when you do the early morning window do you see kind of consistent universal metabolic benefits. And so that's yeah. probably the main factor as opposed to not so much the window, but when that window is. Okay, that makes sense. I it seems like I'm gonna have to switch. I'd rather skip breakfast and pig out on cereal and berries at midnight <laughs> with the kids. When I eat an earlier dinner, I sleep. My the quality it's of my true. rest is so yeah. much better. Very true. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I did that um after I learned that I do a whole chronobiology chapter in the How Not to Diet book. Yeah. Um, I started eating a lot earlier because of yeah. it. I just tried to shift my meals earlier. Now, you know, in a family setting, that's not always easy depending on people's work right. schedules. But if you can do it, um, there are yeah. benefits. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we've always been working on it. And this is this has given me extra oomph to, to make dinner happen. <laughs> Great. Early. I'm so, all about the oomph. Yeah, all about the oomph. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking more to some of these fads, you know, like, again, you hear a lot about the intermittent fasting and there's something that we keep hearing so much about. Friends are running to this carnivore diet. Or, you know, more so like, you know, I'm going to homestead. I'm going to have my chickens, yeah. my raw dairy milk, my raw butter. Right. And it's it's just Liver such an meats. emphasis on so much animal. Crazy. Yeah. You know, carnivore dieters are kind of like the, uh, you know, the flat earthers of the nutrition yeah. world. Right. right. But you know, unlike all meat diets, right? Believing the earth is flat isn't going to kill anybody, right? You know, balking at the scientific consensus can sometimes be harmful for your health. Yeah. You know, there's something called the True Health Initiative, um, which is kind of like the IPCC of nutrition, where they brought together hundreds of the top nutrition scientists of the world to agree to a definition of the healthiest human diet. Um, and spoiler alert, it is one composed mostly of unprocessed plant foods. It's really the healthiest diet. And, uh, you know, these these people that are telling people to go the opposite direction are going to harm people. It's so difficult to navigate, especially on social media, when you see this MD advocating for this diet, yeah, this MD advocating for the opposite. Yeah. And so something else that really raises a red flag to me is this um, particular influencer um, marching around as an MD. <laughs> Right. Who 
advocates for a high cholesterol and says it's what we need for our hormone right. health. Advocate. And men, you know, I get a lot of guys that say, oh, what about testosterone? And yes, cholesterol for hormones and all these things. And yeah, what's the what's the truth there? So, you know, now we have these this tremendously powerful class of drug called PCSK9 inhibitors actually injected uh, drugs that can drop people's cholesterol down to single digits, oh, literally single yeah. digit cholesterol. And the concern was, well, God, at that low, yeah. certainly there's going to be problems with hormone production because these hormones are made from um, cholesterol. And no, no problems. <laughs> With <laughs> testosterone, with adrenal gland hormones, with uh, female sex hormones. And so yeah. even when you drop that low, right. we don't have a problem. And so this is this is just kind of one of those made up things that, I mean, theoretically, it kind of yeah. makes sense. And right. there was concern that that would yeah. happen. But when actually put to the test, we have science on it. Um, it's just not true. And so people right. should stop saying it. I think a lot about fruit we eat a high raw diet but there are Excellent. a lot of people who say that the sugar causes aging and what is what's the difference i mean is is between like you know your refined sugars and your unrefined sugars when we get uh f sugar in the way nature intended in whole fruit form it is very different has a very different effect in the body the concern with uh, eating added sugars um, these so-called free sugars outside of their cell walls, so, uh, you know, something like, you know, corn syrup or, or table sugar, is because it causes this unnaturally high surge in our blood sugar, um, which then our body uh, has to suppress with a big surge of insulin, and we actually overshoot and drop too low, and our blood sugars actually drop below when we started out originally so our body then releases this fat in the blood called triglycerides which has negative effects and the cycle continues day after day when we do the same thing with fruit we don't get the same effect we don't get these exaggerated blood sugar spike we don't get the overshoot we don't get the excess insulin we don't get the triglycerides um so when you take people and have uh you know uh, have them drink three tablespoons of, you know, corn syrup. You oh. get the exaggerated blood sugar spike. But then if you add some pureed berries, like you get in a smoothie, you puree berries. Oh. And added so many berries that added an extra tablespoon worth of sugar. Yeah. So now you have four tablespoons of sugar. Before you had three, now you have four. Guess what? You have less of a blood sugar spike. Wow. So the, the berries actually lower the blood sugar, even though you added more sugar. Why? Because the polyphenols in berries actually slow the absorption of sugar through the intestinal wall into your bloodstream and the fiber in the berry right. slows the rate at which food leaves the stomach so you get this combined effect that's the way our body should be getting sugar it actually causes less so you randomize diabetics for example eat more fruit or less fruit who does better who has better blood sugar control the ones that were told to eat more fruit profile the study in one of my videos where they have people i think eating 26 servings of fruits a day they figured there has to be some upper limit right i forget how many like gallons of coca-cola worth uh, you know, like of right. sugar they were eating so 26 servings of fruits a day and so you'd expect okay at that level you get the triglycerides you get the liver fat you get the high blood pressure all the things you get from over drinking soda or something no they yeah. only got benefits so and now maybe at 27 shit goes bad who knows yeah. but, <laughs> i mean but no no fruit so. is one of the healthiest foods we possibly eat in yeah. fact that's how we evolved for millions of years back since the miocene era we are frugivorous animals we uh, uh we eat lots of fruits and leaves and are healthier for it that's yeah, amazing. I mean, so many people, you know, ask us, you know, I have a sweet tooth and people feel this tremendous guilt for having this sweet tooth. Right. And it's just, you're not satisfying your body's need for that healthy form of glucose. And I used to be one of those people that I hoarded candy every single place. She had in me the hide it when we got car. together. She was uh... like... Will you take it away so I can't find it? But I would oh, yeah, my yeah. fruit intake. I would have one banana and say, oh, well, I've reached my fruit quota for the day. Uh... You're pieces, killing me. But I, I completely transferred over. Yeah. And you know, yeah. the nice thing is it's a lot more difficult to overeat on fruit than it is on, like candy and refined sugar foods. Your yeah. body kind of tells you when enough is enough. And I think that fiber helps a lot. Yeah. Um, you make so. that argument a lot too. I read a book by uh, Doug Graham years and years ago, and he, and he talks about two 
how fruit is colorful and how fruit is on the trees and how mo a lot of these carnivorous animals see in black and white and and how uh, we obviously we see in color and I'm like you know what it just makes sense there's so <laughs> many things just make sense that that's what we want to go for it's beautiful it's delicious and we say and, eat it all day long and same for our kids honestly I don't even think they fully comprehend what candy is right but they love fruit so much that they don't, they don't think they're missing out and right <laughs> Exactly. So I think it delaying those ultra processed foods as love it. long as I love possible it. is the most beneficial for your family. So fruit on, fruit on. We often uh, <laughs> recommend people to our friends, Robbie and Cyrus with Mastering Diabetes. They're oh, both great. on diabetics and uh -huh. they they're, they're, they call themselves frugivores. They're, they're fruit based uh type one diabetic guys and they're killing it and they eat so much fruit is crazy so we're <laughs> we're always pushing people to them and and they're they're what they've got going on over there and and of course right. he's referring people to you your books we can't wait for the new book anything else and there your videos anytime oh, yeah. anybody has a question uh -huh. like i am certain dr gregor has covered uh -huh. it we love that they're just very like nutrient dense videos that are all they're ah! very palatable right and i love it i love it to digest yet so full of so much information so there you go what for the food analogy <laughs> you are you she loves the food analogies. i'm on fire with the analogy oh let's do it let's do it <laughs> well cool anything else dr g we got just a couple minutes left we don't want to take up too much of your time anything else you'd like to add about the any of your books the new book coming out we 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 personally love the blue zone stuff and oh yeah yeah that we're super excited about all that info and and uh Dan Butner's Netflix series and and you I know you mentioned some of that in the new book too oh yeah definitely got a whole big section on uh, on the blue zones yeah I mean really it's just the good news that yeah. we have tremendous power over our health destiny and longevity the vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a healthy enough plant-based diet and lifestyle. And so I hope this really empower people, yeah. uh, inspire people to live longer, healthier, better lives. Absolutely. <laughs> well, hey, thanks again for the time. We hope to do it again very, very soon. You take care. <laughs> Happy to help out. Keep up the great work. Yep, Good to see thanks. you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>